just can't keep your feet all over the room if you can. Just for a momentary for a word of prayer. And I ask you to do that purposely to just relax yourself as we go into our message for today. Merciful God, our Father, we thank you for this day. Day that you have made and we come to rejoice and be glad in it. So many would rather be here with us today, but for some reason or another, they could not. But we are here, God, and we are thankful. You blessed us, Lord, in spite of our shortcoming. You kept us and you never left us. So we are here today to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being present in this place. So, Lord, we know that since you're here, you're going to participate. Lord, warm up our hearts. Lift up our eyes. Give us a fresh anointing. And, Lord, give us, grant us new mercy every morning. We ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for you, all of you. Amen. That is work in worship. Amen. Amen. When we think about the goodness of the Lord and all He has done for us, somebody ought to say thank you. say happy 4th of July Amen. to all of you again. You paused to participate even though you could have did like other than pretend you was on vacation. Tell the truth, we've been on vacation for 15 months. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Today I'm going to talk a while about what I call Daddy is waiting on you. Daddy is waiting on you. I want to look at that which is for me in Luke yeah, Gospel 15 chapter. Once a year, I revisit this chapter and this is the time in the middle of 2021, begin in the seventh month of this 2021 year. No scripture ought to be so familiar that we ignore them. Or uh, we say, I know them. But I believe as long as I have been preaching, God give me new revelation. When I study his word, if I get the same thing every time, the word is not doing what it is designed to do. God gives us new revelation. This book, this Bible has been around for many, many years. It's the same book, but new revelation. That's why I Paul said to Timothy, today, show yourself approval, not unto humankind, but unto God, that you will be able to rightly divide the word of God. Luke chapter 15. I want you to see verse 20. I'm going to read just a few verses that the entire chapter is before us. But I'm going to read beginning at verse number 20 and a few of the following verses. It said, and he arose 
and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Dad, I've sinned against heaven. And in thy and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called your son. Just read these two verses. Daddy is waiting on you. Daddy is waiting on you to say to you from this topic it suggests that a biological brother or sister is saying to his sister or brother that daddy is waiting on you it suggests from a spiritual standpoint, God is our Father. And we who are sisters and brothers in Christ have been neglecting what is required of us. And it's somebody's duty to say to brothers and sisters, Dad, waiting on you. This is familiar, this Luke chapter 15 is most pastors and preachers who have been preaching a long time. It is somewhat of a stick sermon. What I call stick is it stick with you. And then when it stick with you, it stays with you. And the good part about it is that it can become an emergency sermon. When other does not confirm or other are not really uh, available, this is one stick to sermon that is often heard in most ministries. Many may say that it's a Sunday school message because of the simplicity in the sermon. But thank God that it is a message that we who are our Father's children, all of us who have the same daddy, and many times one need to say to the other, that dad is waiting on you. And you say that from a priesthood standpoint because daddy, our father should be the priest, the prayer warrior, the leading person in the house to lead the family in grace, in prayer, lead the family in worship. It is an awesome dad that you see he and the family worshiping together. It's sad to say that in this modern day time, daddy has laid down because what daddy do individually, he does not do collectively with family. And somehow there has been a delay in the family because of dad not fully participating in. So God gave me this thought today to share with us, which is not Father's Day, but it is the Lord's Day. And it comes uh, for encouragement. 
it comes to suggest that if you see your shortcoming or your lack, uh, when it comes down to following Christ, there needs to be somewhat of a lift up, or a step up in your participation when it comes down to being that man of God that has been called by God for you to be. I like this, I like this 15th chapter for multiple reasons, multiple reasons, but mainly I like it because it tells us about someone and something that we lost. All of us, uh, if we be honest, we can remember the times in our life when we didn't know that we were lost. It had to take somebody of wisdom and some religious entity to say to us that you're on the road to hell and you're lost and you need to be found. Somebody encouraged you because you're here today because of that very individual who did encourage you to come to the Lord's side and make a change in your life. That's for me in this day and time because uh, people in the world today, they are lost. But yet still, they don't realize that the road that they're on is the road to destruction. That is waiting on you. In this chapter, 15th chapter of Luke, as we haze through it, I said to you three things, three, two things that were lost. Third was an individual. The first thing that we lost was a sheep. Man had 100 sheep. And you wonder sometimes how is it that when one of the sheep began to wander away from the fold, the sheep must have been of value because here the man who owned the 100 left the 90 and 9. Somebody asked a question, uh, why is it that you leave a whole flock to go and find one sheep? He did it because of the value in the one. And if you put that in perspective, uh, if you being one individual and a whole mother to the people are saved and you are lost, you will perhaps want someone to come and find you. This sheep couldn't find himself because when he left the fold, he did like most people we know, he started wondering. Uh, as the preacher said, he began to nibble and he nibbled himself lost. You can easily do that because there are so much stuff out there that will cause you to start nibbling. You being a part of the fool and you become so complacent until you can easily go wondering. You, you wonder sometimes when you see people in the sanctuary of the ministry how they at one point in time would be a front seat supporter. But then because they began to nibble, move to the third row and move to the fourth row and finally they're on the very back row. And on the back row is a row that's not noticeable 
so much. And then one day, when you notice the back row, the individual who have moved from the front, sitting on the back, notice they are not there. What happened? This is the they went nibbling, and they nibbled themselves lost. You can say what you want, because there are people who are saying that they are looking for something. They are looking here, and they are looking there, but they are already lost when you find yourself looking here, looking there, everywhere, when you won't grow where you're planting. You see, a tree it must grow where it's planted because if you constantly becomes uprooted and moving around, eventually the tree dies because it's been uprooted so much. People are the same way, so that's why you can't depend on people who are floaters, people who are backseat supporters, because when they are not there, it's sad to say they are not missed. But this man, with his 99 sheep left, with the fold, he went to find the one that was lost. And the Bible says that when he had found the one that was lost, he picked him up, put him on his shoulder, brought him back to the place and he called the friends. Come on, celebrate with me because that what is lost. He now found. You see, uh, when you notice the sheep, the sheep couldn't come back to the shepherd because he was lost. But the shepherd knew how to go and find the lost sheep. Well, well, when you look at uh, the second story here as a parable, it has to do with the lost coin. The lost coin. The lady lost a valuable coin. You know how it is. It was something like a, a wedding ring. Most of you ladies know the value of your wedding ring. Most of you who love being married and you love wearing your identification that I'm being, I am taken, uh, and when you mess up and lose your ring, lose that which is valuable to you. Some mountain lady, uh, she lost that which was valuable, the corn was valuable to her. And I wonder sometimes when you read the story of the lost corn, the Bible says she lit a candle. So she lit a candle in her house that implied that in her house was God. She needed the light. And then it also implied that her house floor must have been dirty because she had to sweep to find the corn. Anybody in here? Uh, so that says something about your house if you gotta light it up and if you gotta clean it up to find something that belongs. It's saying the screen. Right. And sometimes you wonder why is it that my television is so hazy? Right. It's simply called you neglect. Doing what is required of you, that is queen the screen. That's how our life is sometimes. We are so 
mistaken for a, a job. Being a Jewish boy, uh, he failed to rock bottom. Have anybody ever been at rock bottom in your life? There ain't no place that you want to be. Rock bottom is at the very bottom of a rock. And nobody reaching down to pick you up. This boy. If you notice the 15th verse, and he went, joined himself as a citizen of that country. Wow. And he sent him into his field to feed swine. Remember, Jewish boy don't even touch swine. He don't eat pork. He don't fool with nobody pigs. The rock bottom could cause you to do what you got to do. This boy here start feeding the swine. And it's sad to look at how they eat it and you start it. You or humankind feeding an animal. You who are in a country that's not your own. But when life starts happening, 
and you go to complain about that. I did the best I can, but you ain't blessing me. But what you fail to realize is that you're the next. jealous of your brother or sister because of the materialistic thing that they had. Just know that you're next in line. Why? Because your dad is rich in houses and land. He holds the wealth of this world in his hand. If he blessed one, he'll bless another. He thought he had everything going on in the field. He's 
how love being blessed. People don't like to see others blessed. They become enemies and jealous of them. You have your gift? I'm going to pray the offering prayer and the benediction collectively. Father, we thank you for the gift of all. By every person who got a blessing to this ministry, who knows that financially and spiritually, practically, physically, and presently, their support means so much. Thank you, God, that they've been a blessing, and you're going to continue blessing them. Now, as we leave this place, Lord, we plead the blood over every person here, and we pray, God, that you give them safety throughout this day, as they celebrate what we call Independence Day, as they celebrate from which we have come from. Thank you. Now may the grace of God as we commune us, Holy Spirit, with the rest, move with us, henceforth and forevermore.